I like to think of it as this great opera, basically. It has a very different feeling to part one. Part one I always felt was this intimate, is the intimate half of, the f of our concluding film. And part two is much more um, operatic and epic. It's got big battles, it's got dragons, it's got um, lots of destructions of horcruxes. So it's a much more spectacular action picture than uh, part one was. And I think that's really cool to be able to do this much more intimate, edgy road movie. And then when you get to part two, the, the screen goes like that and just opens out into super wide screen for, you know, the finale, basically. Harry's just lost um, Dobby, and you know this. In a way, Dobby represented a, an aspect of his childhood, and Dobby's such an innocent character. Um, that's why it's so pow powerful seeing someone like that die, um, and it sort of represented this loss of innocence, this loss of childhood. And so, at the beginning of part two, Harry's a, a determined soldier. Basically, he wants to see this through. He wants to finish it. So um, he's a young man rather than a boy, and he's determined and he's ruthlessly um, sure of his task. He wants to kill Voldemort, and that's where we find him at the beginning of Hadler's Part Two. Voldemort is um, he's on the cusp of power. He feels he feels incredibly strong, but then he discovers that Harry's been hunting Horcruxes. So Harry, he suddenly realizes that for the first time we've ever seen him, he's particularly vulnerable. And there's this journey that he takes through the film where he starts to fragment and you can suddenly see what I wanted to try and achieve with Wraith was this vulnerability in this evil monster. And I wanted to sort of see the, the sort of pathos, which is kind of tricky because he's got to be really scary. And Voldemort has to be really terrifying when you look at him. But I wanted to understand why he was scary and and to see his weaknesses. And I thought that was quite interesting. So I encouraged Rafe, and Rafe was keen to explore the kind of vulnerable side of Voldemort, i.e. his fear, his anxiety, the things that make him the monster he is, basically. It feels quite haunting and apocalyptic. And there's some beautiful shots at night where you're just seeing silhouettes of broken buildings with tiny shadowy figures walking through and um, and there's something just shocking about having something that has this mythic value I think violated and broken um, it has a power about it that resonates um, and one of the most haunting images is Dan's walking down a staircase and there's lots of rubble everywhere but on the floor a strewn thousands of books just in the rubble in the dirt you know and that's that was actually quite a spooky image just seeing books underfoot somehow and uh, but um, we wanted it to feel ap apocalyptic basically you know what it's been great I wouldn't have missed it for the world I'm so glad I've seen it through um, I'm proud of the films I think they're good films um, and you know, I'll miss the people. It's been enormous fun. The people have been great. Um, it's been intense. It's been really tough at times. But it's never not been fun. Um, I, I think I'll only really get a handle on it when it's behind me. Right now, when you're in the middle of something, it's really hard. I'm just focused on finishing part two. So it's really hard to kind of contextualise it. I'll never make anything that's going to be seen by as many people ever again. I'm sure of that. It would be like lightning striking twice.